So in a lot of ways, our GPU reviews, I personally think that they tend to lie to you guys just a little bit. That's because we review every GPU under the best possible scenario, and that's using the highest end system possible. So in this case, we've been using a 9800X3D for the last couple of months. But the reality is that most of you are not going to be pairing up today's GPUs with the highest end system available. You might be looking at something a little bit more affordable, or you might be using these new GPUs as a simple drop-in upgrade. So we might not actually be expressing exactly how these GPUs might perform in a more realistic scenario. And when that happens, the biggest question is whether or not those systems, which aren't the most powerful around to begin with, will end up bottlenecking a brand new GPU to the point where a card that might look amazing when running on a 9800X3D simply won't deliver anywhere near the frame rates it should when it's installed into a more affordable setup. And that's what this video is all about, right? Right? We took two of the most popular GPUs on the market right now, the RTX 5070 and the RX 9070 XT, and we put them through a crazy amount of testing. Let, hold, hold on a second. Let, let me go through this with you. All right, let's see. We went through 11 different processors spanning seven years of CPU technologies. Not only that, there were six different platforms and 14 different games tested. And those processors are all mid-tier examples from AMD and Intel from both companies' 5 series going back a few generations to the 9600K and 3600X. I'll also be adding in the 9800X3D for a best case example. Finally, there's also the 9600K being run with an RTX 2070 as a baseline for everything. That can be used as an example of what a simple drop-in upgrade to the RTX 5070 or RX 9070 XT would look like. We're going to be running every game at 1440p with the highest possible settings. Since if you're spending this kind of money on a GPU upgrade, I think those are, I guess, reasonable goals that everybody should at least expect. I also wanted to go through the charts with you guys because we will be throwing an epic ton of information at you in a relatively condensed format. The idea here is to give you as much information as possible and if you want to pause the video, you can do so. But I also want your feedback because this is a little bit of an evolution of our approach that we've been doing with butterfly charts for a little while. If you have strong opinions, either to the positive side or the negative side about the way that we're doing this, please put them in the comments down below. So all of the RX 9070 XT numbers will be on the left side, while the RTX 5070 will be on the right. We purposely separated them here since this is not, and I repeat, not a GPU comparison, since these cards target slightly different markets and price points. The focus is solely on CPU scaling for each, nothing more. Let's start with Alan Wake 2, and for the most Part, we run face first into a GPU bottleneck, going all the way back to Intel's 10th gen and the Ryzen 5 3600X. So basically every CPU ends up delivering about the same amount of performance with both of these GPUs. There are a few exceptions though. Typically Intel's 11th gen and later CPUs give a little bit lower 99th percentile frame rates. And while the 9600K isn't really bottlenecking the 5070, the 9070 XT's extra horsepower leads to a trailing the other processors by about 13% on the other hand, stepping up to either of these GPUs represents a world-changing performance uplift for somebody with a 2070, even without switching processors. Black Myth Wukong pretty much shows the same thing, with all the systems running into a GPU bottleneck long before the processor steps into the equation. Even the 9600K is able to deliver the same performance as a 9800X3D when paired up with an RTX 5070 or RX 9070 X level graphics card. So that once again leads to an absolutely titanic frame rate increase as a drop-in upgrade for anyone with an older system. In the case of the 9070 XT, it actually triples the performance of a 2070. And yet there are games that will ultimately be CPU limited, even at their highest detail settings at 1440p, with Baldur's Gate being one of them. Here, someone with an older processor like the 9600K or 3600X, or even the 5600X for that matter, will see tangible benefits from upgrading their CPU to a current generation model before buying a new graphics card. I mean, let's put this in context. Let's say you have a 9600X with an RTX 2070 and bought the RX 9070 XT. Well, because of a processor bottleneck, that money was just 
thrown out the window since you won't really notice any frame rate benefits. Meanwhile, stepping up to a 14600K, 265K, or 9600X will make a huge difference. Still though, if you want the best possible outcome, a 9800X 3D is absolutely the way to go here. CS2 on the other hand gives us very different results. This isn't the best optimized game for Radeon GPUs, so other than some reductions in 1% lows for older CPUs, every setup gets the same performance. The RTX 5070, well, that tells a whole other story, with there being a very gradual frame rate uptick from one generation to another on the Intel side, while AMD CPUs see a huge jump in 1% lows on the newer AM5 platform. And unlike Baldur's Gate, doing a drop-in upgrade is hugely beneficial even though you're still leaving some performance on the table here. Meanwhile, Cyberpunk gives a good example of what happens when CPU and GPU performance are basically tied at the hip. On one hand, there's obviously a graphics bottleneck, which causes all of the processors to have about the same average frame time. But newer generations obviously deliver a lot better frame pacing, which causes the 1% lows to jump pretty significantly between Intel's 9th and 10th gen and when comparing the Ryzen 3000 series to the 5000 series. Doom falls into that same situation where there's a bit of CPU bottlenecking from older processors, but it's not detrimental to performance of either of these graphics cards. I mean, sure, someone with a 9600X could get a bit higher average frame rates and certainly better 1% lows on a newer platform, but would the expense justify the end result? In this game, the answer would be no, because simply buying a new GPU could more than double your performance. But it's also important to remember that older processors like Intel's 9th and 10th generations and the Ryzen 3000 series do tend to bottleneck these graphics cards in most situations. It might not be much, but the performance per dollar benefits do tend to start going downhill in games like Space Marine. And look, you still get a whole lot more performance than something like an RTX 2070, but if you're pairing up one of those processors with a brand new GPU, it simply won't be used to the fullest of its capabilities. Hogwarts, it shows the same thing, even with the 1% lows causing an absolute stuttering mess on every single processor, though to a lesser extent on the RTX 5070. So while that drop-in upgrade might look very, very tempting, upgrading to a newer CPU could net you upwards of 30 more frames per second in both averages and 99th percentile frame times. Ultimately though, the choice that you decide to make might come down to how far you want to take your GPU budget. Because in games like Horizon Forbidden West, the RTX 5070 obviously becomes the limitation, so CPU performance has much less of an impact. However, the more powerful 9070 XT causes a larger separation between consecutive processor generations. Overall though, we're still seeing a more than doubling of frame rates from that simple upgrade path. There are also a lot of cases like this where it doesn't matter which processor you're rocking. When a GPU gets hammered, frame rates end up hitting a wall. And at least in Black Ops 6, upgrading from a 2070 to the 9070 XT could more than quadruple your frame rates. Also, the 265K's 1% lows point towards it obviously needing some optimizations when it's paired up with AMD's newest GPU generation. And the 3600X experiences the exact same thing. And I've gotta say, we ended up seeing a lot more games run into a graphics card limitation than I ever expected. Going into this, I thought the 9600K would get hammered over and over again, but it actually ends up being a viable option in many cases but certainly not every situation. And speaking of those situations, one of those is Spider-Man that absolutely needs a modern CPU to take advantage of these GPUs. To the point that if you wanna go with a simple drop-in upgrade on a 9600K system, you won't get all that much better performance than a seven-year-old upper mid-tier GPU. Basically, if you land on a game like this, all the money spent on a new GPU goes up in smoke. Starfield lands into that camp too with those 1% lows, although the averages do tend to get a pretty big boost when dropping an RX 9070 XT or RTX 5070 into an older gaming PC. At least with GPUs from this performance tier, people with mid-range Ryzen 3000 or Intel 9th gen CPUs or anything earlier than that, well, they should really think about upgrading, at least 
for more CPU intensive games. But anything that heads into a more, I guess you would call it a, a GPU intensive zone, will pretty much end up being a wash between all of these processors. Though even here in Warhammer 3, some setups are starting to show their age a bit. You'll see relatively huge frame rate increases when replacing an older GPU like the 2070, but when you step up to something like the RX 9070 XT, there's still going to be a bit of performance left on the table without a significant CPU upgrade. So I'm guessing at this point in time, the results, they sort of speak for themselves. And I think that a lot of you guys might actually be breathing a sigh of relief that your slightly older systems or even a lot older systems can handle GPUs of these caliber. But there's also a couple of other things that jumped out during testing too. So to sum things up, if you have a mid-tier system that's, I guess, seven or so years old or newer than that, the amount of additional gaming performance you get from upgrading your entire platform simply isn't worth the cost. At least not when the GPU is an RTX 5070 or RX 9070 XT. So anything from the Intel 10th gen and Ryzen 3000 series onwards, you're perfectly fine. On the other hand, if you're rocking a more powerful CPU from any of these generations, well, they'll hold up even better than what I showed here. I'm also pretty surprised at how well the 9600K held up. I mean, this thing has just six threads, and while that probably causes a huge deficiency in some titles, overall its results were a lot better than I thought they would be when paired up with either of these GPUs. And yet the massive game-to-game -game frame rate variances we saw obviously make this a processor which is getting close very, very close to its expiry date, with graphics cards in the performance bracket we're showing here. And I'm saying close, because the 9600K's limitations will be minimized with less powerful GPUs than the ones that we're showing here. All right, so I guess that's pretty much it, and I've gotta say, this is probably just like the jumping off point of a whole series of these videos that I wanna make about sort of mid-tier CPUs, maybe going back even a couple more generations with more affordable GPUs, because I think that's the reality that a lot of people are going to find themselves in. And I had fun actually looking at how one mid-tier CPU from even seven years ago pairs up with a brand new GPU. And I hope you had fun looking at some of these results too. But anyways, a lot of that is just gonna have to wait until after we return from Computex, but I'm so excited to get a couple more of these done. And if you guys have any comments about this video or what you loved and maybe want to see in the future, please let me know in the comments below. I actually read most of those comments. Anyways, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.